I grew up in a very abusive, dysfunctional family. I became an alcoholic at a very young age, at like eight years old. My mother was an alcoholic and everybody else drank. I was sexually abused. I always had nightmares and always had flashbacks. I just didn't know what they meant. It's very interesting when you think of the relationship of substance abuse and trauma. There are a lot of ways in which there are, they are related. I'm a survivor of rape, domestic violence, and incest. When I was 17, I was already addicted to pills, coke, alcohol, you name it. Some women are given substances when they are abused. Every time I'd leave him, he'd know how to get me back. He would come to me apologetic with a handful of drugs. There are other women whose memories related to the experience are so powerful that they use substances to block things out. I was in my 50s when I started doing drugs. Instead of trying to seek help for my mental health, um, I went the other way and sought drugs thinking that would help. I was actually out there in the street doing drugs only about three years off and on. So I had a very short uh, stint out there, but it was an intense one. Now you're using substances, you're hanging out with people who are also using, your likelihood to be incarcerated or to use prostitution as a way to support yourself goes up. That puts you even further in the world of drugs and alcohol. I've been getting locked up since I was 15 years old. Soliciting charges, petty theft, possessions, off and on. And every time I got locked up, I was under the influence of something. Community connections saved my life. Therapy allowed me to learn why I felt a lot of the things I had felt in my life and why I did things in manners that I did them. It was always trying to cover up the pain. By the time women come to Community Connections, there are a couple of routes by which they have gotten into addiction. But it's very hard to tease out the trauma, the abuse, and the addiction itself. They really become different threads of the same problem. You know, Christine may say, yeah, I can do that. I'd like to learn how to do that. And, you know, Tanisha, you might say, I actually don't want to do that. In the course of running groups and doing various therapeutic interventions, we started to have women talk to other women. And it was very powerful. I always got um, exceptional feedback from magazine and felt that I could share anything, no matter how personal or how um, traumatic, and not feel that I'd be judged. You know? What we needed was a center where women could share their experiences, offer support, and also offer hope that there was a way out of these dangerous and violent relationships. Everybody in a good space today? Yeah. Okay, that's right, that's right. Self-respect is not about what we do. I wish I had a center like Sisters Empowering Sisters when I was going through my worst time. It's a safe place, number one. Very loving place, a place you can come and get hugs. A place you come and get um, a lot of support. Hi, good morning. Hi. Look, you look, you got your hair. Yeah. Different, it's beautiful. How did that person work out for you? We're a peer-led center. Women just like me come every day there and with a soft voice and a strong hand saying, I'll pull you up. Hold on. 
I'll pull you up. Every day. But coming to this room has showed me how dysfunctional my family was and all that trauma and molestation. I still had some deep wounds. You still got wounds? Yes. There is a real clinical program here. There are real groups, there are real goals, there are real objectives. About a year ago, I used to have so much low self-esteem about me yeah. that all I could do was use. Mm -hmm. You know, all I could do is prostitute myself because I, 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 did, I thought less of you. Right. Yeah. So then, you can't come to me and say you got $20 and I'm going to jump in your car. And you still so, You can't do that to me today. The program is being implemented by women who have this kind of empathic resonance for other women. I was knocked down and I was yes. told I wasn't going to be nothing yes. and I, my family didn't believe in hugs, no. they didn't believe in, in kisses, they didn't no. believe in that. Right. So right. I had to build up my own respect, my own <laughs> self-esteem, yeah. my own stuff. Yeah. I had to look at the way they treat me and say to myself, I'm not going to treat nobody the way they treat me. Or my me. kids. Or my kids. It's like, wow, I'm really helping somebody. And I'm really telling my story. And it's possible to overcome alcoholism. Not overcome, you're going to be in recovery, but to deal with the trauma issues and deal with the things that are always holding us back. There's such a stigma with mental health. A lot of times we think we don't have a voice or our voice is not important enough to be heard, but it is important. I used to get severely depressed. And this has just put a whole new perspective on my life, you know, and given me hope. Um, I can't even talk without crying, you know. That's not right. Sorry, it's bad. But, um, I've been through emotional stress ever since I was seven years old. And I try to share that hope with other women in the groups that I facilitate. When does the pain stop? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm tired of running. Oh, You're going to be all right. You're surrounded by people who love you. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it might sound cliche, but we're going to love you too. You learn to love yourself. And we're going to help you through this. Yeah, the time. In the center, everybody's just sisters. I can go to any one of my peers and say, look, I'm feeling anxious today. And they say, do you need to talk? And I can talk it out. I feel good about me. You know, I finally learned how to love myself through Sisters and Power Sisters. And I've actually stopped taking my nighttime meds. <laughs> I can go home and go to sleep on my own. And that's something that's very new. Community Connections is a mental health agency, but it also sees itself as a social change agency where people make efforts to do things differently. She, her spirit was this Christ. Mm -hmm. It was. Her spirit was. was this Christ. She was this I used for 32 years. I don't never want to get high again. Right now, I'm safe. When I have to have a sponsor, I do step work, I go to meetings, and I do the same thing I did as I first came in to recovery. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Therapy is an evolving science. Every time we learn something new, we modify what we had before, and we have a transformed product. This place has really made me feel good about myself. I was on my way here, and um, a neighbor asked, was I going to work? Uh, all right, yes, I'm going to work. That's right. I'm going to a women's center. It's helping me get myself together. Mm -hmm. Sisters Empowering Sisters adds another piece. 
It adds the personal experience piece. Uh, it adds the you will learn from me because I've been there piece. I love coming here to Sister Empowering Sisters because you guys empower me every day that I come in these doors. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say do I think Sisters Empowering Sisters is the last step along this road? No, I do not. But I think for us at Community Connections, it is the next step. I, I just want to say that uh, I'm so grateful to be in Sisters Empowering Sisters because I can go downstairs and outside and, and say, oh, I, I'm in Sisters Empowering Sisters. <laughs> oh, that's a great group I heard it. <laughs> Thank you.